I'm Stephen McDonnell, and for the past 10 years, Beijing has been my home. That includes a year of study and nine years as ABC China correspondent. It's been a period of massive change. Politics, the environment, the economy, you name it. Even the look of the place, the whole urban landscape has shifted. This has become one of the great modern cities. And you know what? It sometimes feels like the new centre of the world. I'll show you what I mean. Not some of you are thinking. Where's his helmet? Come on, this is China. Since I've come here, an array of new buildings have appeared on the Beijing skyline. China Central Television, also known as the Big Underpants. The National Centre for the Performing Arts or the egg, Beijing TV, the inverted middle finger, the People's Daily Headquarters, to the frustration of its architect, has been nicknamed the penis. And there are countless other new and impressive structures, perhaps a metaphor for China's shifting place in global affairs. So much has happened during my posting here. But in this special edition of Foreign Correspondent, we're going to revisit a few of the moments which have stayed with me and find out what's happened to some of the incredible people we've met. We're going to take a look at where China's been and where it might be heading. This is an alarmingly interesting, contradictory place. For example, Beijing's traffic goes into gridlock most days, but at least these bike lanes are here to try and get around it. Rapid development has helped and hurt China. And it really went into overdrive in the run-up to the Olympics. The major driving factor for the capital's modernisation was the 2008 Olympic Games. Stadiums like the Australian-designed water cube were breathtaking. And centre stage belonged to the bird's nest. You would have expected the Olympics to be the story of the year. But that turned out to be something else altogether. There are definitely large numbers of people who are still trapped in the rubble up there. Tens of thousands of people have died here. Communities have been ripped apart, family members lost. It will take a monumental effort to rebuild. The official death toll from the earthquake which hit Sichuan province on the 12th of May 2008 would eventually surpass 80,000 people. When we hiked through here down to the earthquake epicenter below, it didn't look like this. There was not a blade of grass in this valley. Two mountains had collapsed and on either side, sand and rocks had poured down into the middle and with every aftershock, giant boulders were coming down from the top of the mountain and hitting the ground. And we had to move through that. 
I can tell you we did it pretty quickly, but we made it through. We enter Yingxiou. It looks like a town which has been bombed. In just two minutes, this industrial centre was shaken to pieces by the most powerful earthquake to hit China since the 1970s. We've arrived here at the epicentre of the earthquake. This is a scene of utter devastation. It's a town no longer, really. There's virtually not a building left standing. Now uh, we've come across an officer here from the army who I think he wants us to leave. So uh, he's taking us off to, to speak to people. But uh, all I can say is look, look around. It's, it's absolutely the whole place has been destroyed. Today we return to Ingshou to see what's become of this once flattened community. Along the road, evidence of the powerful quake is still there to be seen. We arrive in a town that's been completely rebuilt and find that its economy now evolves around what you might call earthquake tourism. The ruins of the destroyed middle school have been preserved as a museum. You can walk around it and take photos. On the one hand, it seems a little macabre to make a tourist attraction out of a collapsed school where so many children died. But on the other, the people of Ingshou don't want to forget the day when their whole town was destroyed and to remember how hard it's been to rebuild it to this point. Yet there are those for whom the constant reminder of the earthquake has been too much. In 2008, we met pregnant Yu Rong. The earthquake hit two days before her wedding. Her husband-to-be was crushed to death by a massive falling boulder. Seven years on, we set out to try and find her. <laughs> we meet a street cleaner who thinks she recognises you wrong from the photos and leads us to a newly built house. <laughs> She looks different, but this is her. Today, Yu Rong is raising a seven-year-old daughter and facing daily battles with the demons of May 2008. Mm. Mm. She's too upset to talk to us, so we speak to her mother instead. Gao Guihua tells us the family's struggling to pay for her daughter's medical treatment and that Hu Rong has never really recovered from the day the earth shook beneath them. Her 